Hello everyone, and welcome back to another remote sensing lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to continue our discussion on band assignment by going through sort of, again, conceptually what band assignment is, showing you the results of band assignment, and then hopefully be able to do a live demonstration in ArcGIS Pro of what band assignment looks like in real time. So the first thing I want to do is I have two different examples of band assignment. So over here on the left, right, or sorry, on the right, I should say, right, these are band assignments. So again, right, the display channels, we talked about this in the previous conceptual video, where the band, uh, or the display channels are just your software's way, right, ArcGIS is ArcGIS Pro's way of integrating red, green, and blue, and relating that information to actual wavelength regions, All right? Actual wavelength, let's make the arrow go the right way, right? And relating that information to actual wavelength regions that are coming from the remote sensing data, right? So this is again, right? This is just the, this is your computer's way of bringing in the remote sensing data and saying, okay, remote sensing data, which wavelength region, right? Which band do you want me to use to drive the red color that the monitor is emitting? Which uh, wavelength region or band did you want me to use to drive the green color? Which band do you want me to use to drive the blue color? So these right here, right? These are your display channels, okay? These are your display channels. On the left-hand side over here, these are the wavelength region band assignments for Landsat's aid. Hopefully at this point, we're all pretty familiar with Landsat. So these are the seven bands from Landsat. So band one in this case is band one over here. Let me actually undo some of this line work so we don't get too confused here. So let's take a look and see what this is saying. So this is our band assignment, right? The red, green, and blue, these are our display channels. So what this is saying is this is saying, let's take coastal aerosol blue, right, 430 to 450 nanometers. Let's take that and let's put that here, right, in the red channel. So now my monitor is going to take pixel values, convert them to display values. We'll talk about display values in, 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 a, in a later video, right, but the display values, right, the color, the amount of red light that is being emitted from our monitor is now being driven by the coastal aerosol band in the image. Again, I want to let this sink in here. What this is doing when we have the red display channel being set up to the coastal aerosol blue band, right? These are the bands, these are the display channels. Coastal aerosol band one in this particular sensor is coastal aerosol. So that means that the wavelength region from 430 to 450 nanometers, right? The amount of energy that is being detected by the pixel in that wavelength region is now controlling the amount of red light that your monitor is emitting to your eye. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I know I've gone through it a couple times and going through it slowly because this is kind of once you understand it, it's an easy concept, but getting to that point of understanding is extremely important. So I'm gonna say it one more time. What this is doing here is this is taking the red display channel and it's setting it to band one of the image that we have. Band one of the image is coastal aerosol, which means that 430 to 450 nanometers, right? This blue region of the electromagnetic spectrum is now driving the red light emission coming from your computer monitor. Okay, so what's the green display channel doing? Well, the green display channel is set to band two. So that means that the blue region, right, 450 to 510 nanometers, right, is now being displayed as the green light or is driving the green light that is being emitted from your monitor. And then band three, Right, so this is the green region of the image, right? Ooh, that should be blue. right. Is now driving the blue light that is being emitted 
from your monitor. So let's have a look and see what that looks like as an image. I want to focus on just the top part here. So this is what that would look like if we use red is the red image is being sorry the red display channel is being driven by coastal blue the green display channel is being driven by what we would traditionally call blue and then the blue display channel is being driven by what we would call green and you get this sort of dark purplish blue coloration of the image okay So when we have a scenario where, this is scenario one, let's talk about another scenario. So in this scenario, okay, let's take a look and see what's happening here. Start with the red. So in this case, the red display channel is being driven by band four of our image. Band four of our image is actually red. So in this case, we have the red wavelengths driving the red channel of our display channels, okay? We have the green being driven by band three. Band three is green, so we now have the green wavelength region driving the green display channel. And finally with blue, right, band blue, the blue display channel is being driven by the band two, Band two is what we would traditionally refer to as the blue wavelength region. So in this case, the blue wavelength region is driving the blue display channel, okay? So in this case, right, we have red being, we have the red display channel being driven by red wavelengths. We have the green display channel being driven by green wavelengths. And we have the blue display channel being driven by blue wavelengths. This has a very special name in remote sensing, right? When red equals red, green equals green, and blue equals blue, right? We call this true color, okay? When the display channel is the same as the wavelength region, or put flipped another way, when the when the wavelength region is the same as the display channel, right? When we have red wavelengths driving the red display channel, that's called true color. Now I want to scroll over here, and, and this is going to seem a little weird because you're used to seeing true color images, but you've probably never heard it described as such. So this right here, right? This is the true color image, and this looks exactly like how you would expect if you were flying in an airplane, right? You would look down. The water would be a dark bluish black. A lot of the freeways and buildings and stuff would be kind of a whitish silvery gray. And then vegetation would be this, you know, varying shades of green. Right? So this is what we would expect to see. And you get what you would expect to see, again, when you have a true color image. And you have a true color image when the wavelength region matches the display channel. That's called true color, okay? So let's go back up to this scenario, for example, where we have the red display channel being driven by blue wavelengths, the green display channel being driven by blue wavelengths, and the blue display channel being driven by green wavelengths. This also has a name, and this is called false color. Right? And now there's nothing special about this particular arrangement here. False color is basically anything that is not true color. Let me say that a little more specifically. False color is anything that is not true color. Right, so if the wavelength regions don't match the display channels, it's false color. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. I want to go through one more example. Okay. So this is a very special example in remote sensing. Um, it's so special. It's, it, it is false color, right? If we just kind of quickly do the comparison here, right? These are not 
the, the wavelength regions don't match the display channels. But this is a very special type of false color. All right, so let's walk through what it's showing and then we'll look at what it looks like and then we'll give it the name. So red, the red display channel is being driven by the fifth band of the image. The fifth band of the image is NIR. So in this case, oops, in this case, right, NIR is driving the red display channel. Okay. The green display channel is being driven by band four and band four is red. So in this case, the red wavelengths are driving the green display channel. And then finally, the blue display channel is being driven by band three. Band three is actually green. So in this case, green wavelengths are driving the blue display channel. Okay. Now we're gonna talk in, an, in another video about why this does what it does, but let's just take a look at the results. Right. This is the results of that band assignment. You'll see that water is still kind of a purplish black. You'll see that now any sort of urban areas are a cyan grayish blue. But now vegetation is various shades of red. Okay, we've now turned vegetation from green, which we would expect normally, to these various shades of red. Okay. So we're going to be doing the, this type of image over and over and over again in this course. And uh, if you ever take any, any other remote sensing course, you're going to come across this sort of setup here. And it's so important, in fact, that this is a false color. Right, it's false color because it's not true color, but it has a very special name called color infrared. Color infrared. Actually, let me move that up just a little bit to a little bit of room right underneath. And this is a color infrared. So color infrared is special because the red display channel is being driven by the NIR wavelengths. The green display channel is being driven by red wavelengths. And then the blue display channel is being driven by green. Give myself just a little bit more room here. It's being driven by green wavelengths. Okay, so again, color infrared is a special type of false color where the red is NIR, the red display channel is NIR wavelengths, the green display channel is red wavelengths, and the blue display channel is green wavelengths. Hopefully that made sense. And this sort of, I'm going to put a star down here, makes vegetation red. And again, color infrared, very important in remote sensing. Hopefully this made sense. In the next video, I'm gonna tie this idea of um, band assignment back to the idea that we talked about in the previous videos of spectral response curves and spectral profiles to sort of detail out why we even care about band assignment and why we would do something different from, from true color. So hopefully this made sense. And as always, please reach out. Thank you.